good morning. Uh, Carl told many nice words about me, but uh, this is so-so, not, <laughs> not very true, maybe. Uh, so, uh, I have one hour. I uh, try to, to get, uh, get through it. As Carl told already, I work in uh, uh, Troitsk is now part of Moscow. It is an, uh, such kind of academician city. Uh, there are uh, 12 institutes of Academy of Science, and most people live in Troitsk as well, who work in Troitsk. Uh, it is very convenient, very nice place, a little city, a little uh, part of, of, of Moscow now. Uh, I just, I would like to tell some words about um, recent developments in, in this field, low power laser therapy or photobiomodulation, like it is uh, named now, last years. Uh, just to give you an in impression that uh, really this method is used in, in many medical fields and uh, there is a big, uh, uh, big, there are big possibilities uh, for uh, uh, medical, especially for medical developments in, in the future. Uh, this is uh, one thing I like uh, very much is neuroprotective treatment. And uh, indeed Parkinson, as you know, Parkinson disease is a very serious uh, uh, condition and uh, sometimes it really helps this radiation uh, technology. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, this is Patricia Tim, Tim, Trimmer's work uh, from America. She is a well, well-known specialist in this field. And um, they have show, shown in very nice experiments um, that uh, mitochondrial movement is normalized after uh, irradiation and uh, neuron, uh, neurons uh, in, in real organisms uh, are functioning better after irradiation and uh, this, in my opinion, is a great de development as well. Uh, yeah, it has been last year, years, uh, used this method, I mean, uh, in uh, infarct patients, uh, again, very unpleasant and very hardly uh, curable um, uh, condition. And uh, I think uh, this particular uh, development has a very nice perspect perspective in, in the future. Uh, uh, I, I think many of you know that vitiligo, it is, uh, you, you practically cannot uh, treat it. It is white uh, spots, they will be forever and so on and so forth. But uh, by uh, irradiation, you can stimulate melanocyte proliferation. And in this case, um, uh, people have found that um, you, you uh, can use um, this biostimulation technique in, 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 in this particular clinical case of, um, a, a, as well. Uh, yeah, and uh, it, it has been used many years already, uh, treating uh, chemotherapy treated patients. After uh, treatments, you get uh, better conditions uh, you get uh, you get uh, that, uh, good res not yeah, you you develop much better results uh, after treatments um, and uh, recovery of patients when you use photobiomodulation in in in, in those, those cases. Uh, yeah, and uh, this one it, this out um, this method this field has been developed last years, um, uh, how to say, I should say, rather well. And uh, 
reparation of injured nerves, it, uh, it is a, a promising area as well because, you know, it is not uh, very easy to do it in, in uh, usual methods. And, uh, yeah, this is, has been used uh, many years. Uh, you can improve and overcome uh, depression states and uh, many people in laboratory who works with red light, they irradiate themselves when they get depressive and so, and uh, this is used in, in clinic as well, as you see here uh, now. And I think uh, uh, this is good, good point here is that uh, you, there is no harm. You, you cannot uh, do bad things like sometimes when you use uh, chemicals and so, uh, using light and in, in this depressed state, it, uh, uh, in many cases, it helps. Uh, yeah, uh, in, in, in fraction, after in, uh, in fraction uh, and those patients who have been treated. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, uh, this is uh, this part of uh, uh, use of this method, it uh, uh, improves uh, work of mitochondria uh, and in this uh, case uh, the metabolism of cells uh, has been improved as well. Uh, and this is last, I think, from this series of slides I would uh, wanted to show you. Uh, I appreciate very much, I know her personally, Dr. Roberta Shaw, and um, she has been in the field uh, rather many years already, and uh, she has done a lot of work in, uh, in, in, in this field, especially in case uh, in pain therapy, uh, for example, and uh, I think uh, that uh, she is uh, uh, important and those results are important in in our field. So now uh, I will speak about cells. What happened on cells? I just uh, wanted to uh, show, in my point of view, um, uh, um, some perspective medical uh, uses. Now we will see what happened on cellular level when you irradiate patient on their cultures or what else. Uh, and uh, this is a basic mechanism of, of all this action. Uh, there are, as, as I can, uh -huh, uh -huh, in this case, direct effects. You can activate the cells, excitable cells, non-excitable cells, I, as I, I, I gave you uh, some examples, but there are also indirect effects via secondary messengers, via cytokines, lympho lymphokines, reactive oxygen species, and NO, for example, those uh, uh, two are important parts in, in mechanisms. And in this case, you get activation of other cells, not only these which are um, uh, in irradiated, uh, directly. Uh, so <clears throat> I would like once more, I, I think you have seen also spectra, I have, we, we, we started uh, with action spectra uh, recordings, I think in, in 80s of last century, uh, because then it was not important, uh, it was not known which is a primary photoacceptor, which is a mechanism, nothing was, was known at this moment. And in photobiology, it is important uh, to have so-called action spectrum. Okay, this is action spectrum, and all of them are rather similar. You see that uh, these peaks are in similar places. Those wavelengths are similar, only the uh, peak highnesses can be different. And uh, yes, this one explains uh, which one, uh, which model means, and so it is not. Again, nothing. 
so some more of them, you see uh, all these peak positions are the same. And so are really optimal wavelengths of light for using in, in real therapy as well. Uh, some more, and you see the here just I put them uh, uh, in one row, you see. Uh, uh, th th those are connecting with, uh, connected with cell uh, uh, part DNA, RNA synthesis rate here and uh, with cell membrane adhesion of cells and as I told, uh, peak position are exactly the same and it really tells you that the primary photoacceptor is the same in all cases. Uh, and uh, this from photobiological studies from point of view of those, it is the most important, uh, important cell, uh, 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 important thing. Uh, taking together, it was a big part of, of uh, our work, um, some years, maybe 10 years or so. Uh, and uh, there you can see what conclusions we were able to do. Uh, we, we understood that there is photoacceptor, really should be one not uh, known at that moment. Uh, optimal wavelengths are those from blue uh, to far uh, near infrared light. And uh, spectra are really similar. And uh, mm, uh, this is most important point insofar as you have <coughs> Uh, responses with similar action spectra in various cellular organelles. Uh, there should be uh, some way how the photosignal is moved and transferred in uh, cells, in a cell. And again, we have had done uh, many experiments with chemical and so not, uh, I, I would like not to concentrate on this. Uh, this was a real uh, result of that. We understood that all those four peaks, they are connected with copper components of cytochrome C oxidase, so-called copper A and copper B, and uh, they belong uh, to oxidase or to reduced component of those uh, cycle. Uh, and uh, speaking in a more, more chemical way, those are uh, charge transfer uh, to copper channels of reaction and um, those are DD transition in copper. I will not explain what it means, but uh, this is yeah, physics, how uh, they are called and what it does mean. And the real picture uh, of this molecule and those pathways uh, looks something like this. Uh, cytochrome C oxidase is a very complicated molecule, many uh, changes and, and so on, but most <coughs> important is this reaction center inside of cell. Uh, and this one, you see like electrons moves in uh, respiratory chain from cytochrome C to copper A, uh, then to heme A, heme A3, and this is reaction center of cytochrome C oxidase. Uh, and uh, during years, uh, <coughs> uh, during our work, we have proposed and discussed and made, made, ex made experiments uh, to understand which uh, reactions are included. Uh, this is uh, singlet state, crowned state, not excited state of, uh, this is, uh, sorry for some physical uh, term, but uh, believe me, it, it is in this way. And when you irradiate, uh, you put some energy in the molecule and you get the first singlet state. And uh, in, in those intensities and doses which are used in, in phototherapy, you get only first singlet state because energy is uh, low. And during the year we had uh, discussed possibilities which reactions can occur from this first singlet state. This was, I think, the first one. We understood that processes are uh, connected with redox uh, processes in some molecule. We 
at that moment we didn't know which molecule it was, primary photoacceptor molecule. And uh, later on we uh, understood that all also NO is uh, moved from reaction center and I call those red redox reactions in, in cytochrome C oxidase. Uh, and at least two possibilities uh, like reactive oxygen, oxygen species are connected in reactions. Yeah, this was really the first, uh, first uh, uh, reaction mechanism we proposed uh, so many years ago. You see so-called singlet oxygen hypothesis. We understand, understood that uh, there should be some uh, reaction from oxygen to a singlet form of oxygen. Uh, superoxide generation later, so then no hypothesis I told you. And uh, this hypothesis was also first I told about this very early uh, because we started to work with pulsed light, picosecond pulse, uh, uh, later nanosecond and microsecond pulses because I, we understand that, that, that pulse duration and uh, uh, time between uh, pulses is very, uh, so, so both are very important parameters and uh, then, then um, I try to calculate is there some temperature increase or what we call the transient local heating hypothesis. It means that you are not uh, heated uh, the sample, the cold, uh, but only this absorbing chromophore for a very short time. Uh, and uh, yeah, just to illustrate uh, those things what I spoke about, uh, this is eukaryotic cells and uh, all uh, cellular organelles here. And um, this part, mitochondria, there is one mitochondria, but they are always as uh, a network in a cell. Uh, this is a main point was the primary reactions occur in, in this part. All, all those. And uh, later this signal is somehow transduced uh, during cell organisms, uh, or organelles and uh, uh, final part uh, this is transduced to the cell nucleus as well. And uh, yeah, after some years it took some, um, uh, it is not our work. Uh, this was really the first work published and after that the Americans started to do that and uh, uh, nowadays it is rather well known how many genes are activated uh, by irradiation. In this particular case uh, they irradiated 628 nanometers light used and they found they studied, look, almost 10,000 genes, and they found that 111 genes from different categories, they were affected by irradiation. I personally, I, I think it is, it was historically and uh, still is one of most important works made in, in this field. Uh, then, uh, I, I called it uh, this pathway from mitochondria to nucleus. I called it uh, light sensitive mitochondrial retrograde signaling. It means that uh, primary photoacceptors are here in, here in mitochondria and uh, then uh, the signal is moved to nucleus and by uh, a cytoplasm and nucleus regulates re-regulates cellular me metabolism. And during years in, in my laboratory and other laboratories, uh, I remember when Americans started to work in this field, they did a lot of work in this uh, also. And uh, more or less we can understand right now there is mitochondria and uh, there is a cell nucleus which reactions are included in, in, in these pathways, but I am sure that it is not a full path. There are many other possibilities how it, uh, uh, how it uh, uh, is, this signal is transduced in, in, in cell and uh, this is more or less explained in, in this paper of mine.
Uh, so, as, uh, how to say, main point to take, take home from all this story is uh, that uh, it is important that light irradiation, it alterates redox state of the respiratory chain. There are primary reactions, as I told you. Then those reactions uh, cause alteration in redox state of cytoplasm. And for example, intracellular pH is changing our electrical potential of cells is changing. And after that, you get secondary reactions and uh, final photobiological reactions, um, which in most cases, they improve cellular me uh, metabolism, for example, and they are important uh, from clinical point of view. Oi, 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 sorry. Uh, uh, and again, uh, because this process is very complicated, and cells themselves are very complicated, uh, you, uh, everybody has to uh, remember that uh, there are oh, sorry, again, not this. Uh, direct effects of irradiation activation. You get proliferation. It was one of the first thing that people measured always. Aha, we can increase uh, proliferation of cells and uh, lympho, uh, cytokines, lymphokines, and uh, priming of lymphocytes is very important reaction, for example. And in this case, you get uh, indirect <coughs> effects, activation or inhibition of other cells. But I didn't speak um, about uh, reactions connected with this um, enzyme. And again, uh, you can get uh, activation or inhibition of other cells, or via NO generation, for example, as well. I, I think this is the most important point, but uh, it depends on cell ty types as well. And um, uh, of course, um, uh, those in some particular cases, so those reaction types are very important as well. Uh, so I spoke, uh, I spoke mostly about um, direct effects of irradiation. Uh, I, con I, I, I considered that uh, photoacceptor in, in this particular red and near infrared region is in mammalian cells uh, is cytochrome C oxidase. And by the way, we have worked E. coli with E. coli and other prokaryotic cells, and we also found that it, uh, uh, irradiation acts on respiratory chain of cells. Um, irradiation promotes pro-oxidation condition in a cell and um, activation of respiratory chain. I spoke about uh, five possible primary mechanism, maybe mechanisms, maybe there are some others in the future people will find. Uh, but in um, long term uh, cellular responses, when you irradiate and you see uh, changes, exa for example, one day or one week after irradiation, uh, those are so called long term cellular responses. And um, the most important thing is a jump in intracellular redox state into more oxidized direction after irradiation. Uh, until now, all this way, all pathway, reaction pathways, they are not very well known and not studied fully and uh, people still work in, in this field rather actively and uh, after, uh, let's say, 10 years, you will see that uh, um, the picture is much more. Uh, complicated and much more understood. Uh, but the important point is that there is a so-called, I call it universal photobiological mechanism. It uh, means that you start from mitochondria, you ir irradiate mitochondria, uh, will be uh, changed, as I told, by uh, this primary photo uh, reactions, uh, there is a variation of redox state and, and QSOs, changes 
uh, you will see changes in physiological activity of a, of a cell, which you see as medical doctor, doctors uh, in, uh, when you irradiate your patients. Uh, examples uh, which are uh, most um, beloved uh, measurements in, 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 in the community, community enhancement of proliferation. Nowadays, till 20 years, 30 years, many people have measured that. In case of excitable cells, uh, there is new generation of action potential and uh, alteration of beating frequency in some, in case of some times of uh, cells. And uh, I personally, I like this one. We uh, worked uh, a long time uh, with lymphocytes uh, from um, uh, different patients, from different um, illnesses, uh, get uh, the material and so. And uh, for sure, there is a lymphocyte priming. It means activation of lymphocytes to uh, do irradiation. Uh, and yeah, this, this was all I wanted to say uh, very shortly because uh, I, I, I only spoke about most important points. Um, and not, uh, I wanted not to give many details, but uh, details you can find. Uh, I have pu published uh, three books until now, and also all these papers you can fo found in my uh, home page, and you can take uh, them there without any charge. And uh, yeah, in this case you can uh, read and find that point, those points which you are interested in. And yeah, uh, thank you for your attention. And um, it was really my pleasure to speak here uh, because I have born in Estonia in University City of Tartu. I was uh, studied here in um, primary and secondary school, and I finished Tartu University, which is one of the oldest university in 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 in, in Russian territory at all. Uh, and uh, yes, then I moved to Moscow. I was graduate student there, and now I am 35 years head of laboratory of laser biology and medicine. And yeah, this was a new center and uh, I got money and I got possibilities to work and uh, find co-workers and so. Uh, and just, yeah, it was a positive moment in, in my life. Uh, and now I, uh, I, I have here living also in an uh, older part of Tallinn. I, and my family lives here, my daughter, my grandchildren, and my mother is alive, 95 eight years, and uh, those are my Estonian, how to say, connections um, right now. Thank you for your attention. If there are questions, we will uh, pass the microphone, mm -hmm. because we have only one uh, mm -hmm. available. Mm -hmm. He was, um, yeah, my husband, Professor Letokov, was a very famous physicist. And uh, he thought, what physics? You're so low doses, it is impossible. And he persuaded me to, 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 to start with. I, I worked with picosecond impulses. It was very modern that time in, in cerebral culture. You ultrasound pulses, and you see how, what is the difference from continuous wave light, and so, and he, no, uh, I remember that very well. Once he came from a conference home, and he told, again, they speak about this laser biostimulation. It is impossible uh, that so low doses do something. Why not uh, you do some experiments? I don't want, I work with picosecond. This was very modern, uh, very new lasers and so. 
But then, yeah, he persuaded me. Let's, let's perform the experiments and so. And measure something what people understand what you are measuring. And I, okay, I measure DNA synthesis rate. Because in DNA, there is nothing, uh, no molecules to absorb red light. And if we get result, then it means that it is a very complicated process. And, and it was indeed in this way. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, he is now, he is not with us anymore, seven years already, but uh, yeah, he, he persuaded me to do this. <laughs> and then I got interested. Aha, oh, look, we will get spect action spectrum and we will start impulses and uh, yeah. But I think that there was a lot of uh, um, opposition to your work in the beginning. Uh, it is difficult to say. In medicine, they used it. Helium neon laser. And um, uh, yeah, in, in Soviet Union, it was very popular because there was a big laser industry. And helium neon laser was in 60s and 70s main product. And it is red light, 632.8 uh, nanometers. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, they, it, it, it came somehow in from the, those institutes which were connected with army and they found that, oh, yeah, very nice. Sometimes it helps a lot in, in case of wound healing and so when we take helium neon laser. And, but all those people, they didn't uh, know biology said, oh, it is coherent properties of light. And again, my husband told, ah, oh, it is impossible. In, in those intensities and those doses, uh, coherence doesn't matter at all. Only in case of picosecond impulses. Ha, ha, intensities might be my, much higher. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Uh, uh, then I, and uh, we, we, when we got first results, ah, oh, look at that. DNA synthesis rate is in, in increasing uh, when we are ready it with helium neon laser. Aha, uh -huh. then we took not um, a lamp, filter, filtered light, because uh, many, many of those big bosses from uh, those laser industry in Russia said, oh, oh you have to take helium neon laser better from our company, <laughs> and so on and so forth. And uh, there was a very, uh, how to say, uh, how to say they, and I thought, oh no, what this Carlos speaks, it is not right. It is, should be la laser light. And uh, yeah, I had <laughs> a, big f a big fighting with them and my husband, uh, he is very famous, was very famous physicist and the physicist and he told it is not coherent of light. It should be photobiology. And uh, in this case, uh, yeah, uh, and we put experiments and it took maybe almost 10 years when they, uh, understood that it is so and no coherent properties of light. Laser, I always tell, laser is very nice, uh, but uh, this is uh, coherent, uh, coherence of light is um, not the most important uh, thing in this field. But yeah, later it, it, uh, this question was not actual anymore uh, because at that time it was only helium neon laser and, and but later on, when these diodes, LEDs, appeared, it is not non-coherent light, but you can use them as, null, as well. It's history, sorry. <laughs> yeah? Uh, in the case of plants, of course, light... Yeah, yeah, plants, or for co plants, because there is a special system. <laughs> Uh, I think not, uh, because in, in case of plants, uh, there is chlorophylls and phytochromes and all those things, depending on, on, on which ones you use. Uh, and of course, they, uh, they, they uh, but, uh, can, uh, but yeah, uh, in case of uh, human beings and in case of uh, 
animal cells, uh, eukaryotic cells at all. Uh, this laser properties of, of uh, they are not important. Laser is very nice device, you can use it, but don't not, uh, do, do not speak that, uh, oh, coherent properties of this, like, oh, something. It is not right. And all those, my experiments, uh, 10 years, first 10 years, I was fighting, I was fighting uh, with um, all those big bosses of industry who, who produced a lot of helium neon lasers, and they sold it to every clinic in, in, in Russia one time. Every, every clinic has it. Uh, it is very nice. I always uh, argued with, with, with them, uh, but don't speak about uh, coherent properties of, of this light. Light is nice, but the coherence is not important here. And yeah, yeah, it took some years and they started when I put the, the made experiments with uh, properly filtered light near 630 uh, nanometers and they were comparing helium, very, very old works, so helium neon laser radiation of, on, on eukaryotic cells and, and uh, uh, this, uh, uh, yeah, yeah as, I, as I told, after lead appearing, uh, those uh, leads and everything, uh, this question was finished automatically. But it was, it is just history. <laughs> Aging? Yes, of the audience. I am not specialist in aging, <laughs> but I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I know many medical doctors that uh, tell that it is very good remedy, and you, and uh, I know also some medical doctors who show. Ah, look, I radiate myself. Look uh, how young I look like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you. Thank you very much. Um, what, what will happen uh, if we irradiate only uh, 620 nanometer deep? Um, and do you think it's necessary to irradiate uh, the four different peak of the, the infrared? No. If you have to chose one or two people, would you chose 620, 680, 670, yeah, yeah. If, if you take some of my books or go my home page, yeah. we have done during years those experiments. There is also so that when you, um, the different centers, you can uh, absorb and uh, then you irradiate and then um, in this case, you get uh, yeah, disappearing of effect. Mm -hmm. Disappearing of effect in some day. When uh, it is all, all published, and I studied it for years, you can look in, in my books or somewhere. In, in, yeah, you can do wavelengths, two peaks, and when you irradiate simultaneously, <laughs> your effect will disappear. Like in case of white light, for example, so it is a similar way? effect, very similar. And so which peak would you, if you got to choose one peak, if you got to choose one peak, which peak would you, would you choose? Uh, and which dosage uh, would you uh, uh, long, Longer wavelengths is because penetration depth is better. 820, yeah. It's, uh, it depends also, you have to look, uh, is that uh, increasing the part of oxidized enzyme or reduced enzyme? Uh, and in this case, yeah, I should, 
I, I have done this, and one book is, all, all book is written about all this. You, you go to my home page and you find every, everything what you want. Uh, and, uh, but really, in some cases, when you take uh, the equal doses uh, from two peaks, uh, the effect is dis disappearing. And doses, of course, very important. But again, when you work with monolayer of cells, the doses are rather low. Yeah. But when you irradiate real organi organism, the doses might be higher. Uh, better study medical works. I, I cannot say it in, 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 in my, my, I don't remember. Uh, because we did, yeah, yeah. The first, first step, the second step in my studies was, okay, we, we, and medical doctors told, oh, okay, okay, you work with cells and you found those peaks and doses and so on. But we, ready, uh, we work with real, uh, and so the tissues are uh, so on. And, and, and. And then I got angry, not angry, but uh, oh, what not to do experiment. I spoke with, uh, in Monik is a big clinic, most important uh, in, in for Moscow region clinic. And I spoke with doctors who work uh, pen uh, with uh, stomach ulcers. Because I decided we have to irradiate some cells which live in, in dark. And we made uh, the radiation via endoscope. I did that together with uh, um, very well-known specialist in this field. He, radi he checked every day tens and tens of patients about uh, ulcers of uh, so oh, we put it uh, this beam via endoscope, and we are radiated. And he didn't believe his eyes first, <laughs> week or so long. I radiated once or twice, and uh, it is because sometimes they are very bad ulcers. They are not, um, uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, it is published also. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you think about you work at Trigger? Uh, you work at Trigger, a task card mm -hmm. of many other work. I know many industry is uh, having a lot. Yeah, but uh, you never do science. When you work in science, you never think about profit. Yeah. Maybe somebody thinks. I, I never thought about it. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Yeah. and yeah, we have yeah. some pay, uh, patents uh, with uh, those medical doctors about this. But uh, yeah, in Soviet time, when yeah. Soviet times, it was not important. Most important that you get interesting result. And this was, I always tell, sorry, this is a little bit so, uh, because I have lived in socialism and I live now in capitalism. And in capitalism, people say, ah, they'll get the money and uh, what, 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 what else. <laughs> when we do this, how, what it does it cost and uh, get to some profit and so on. But in socialist time, uh, there's no problem. When you spoke with somebody, with medical doctor, that, let's try this one for wound healing or something. Oh, oh, this is interesting. I have a, a group of patients. We, we, we take this. And yeah, uh, yeah. We, we did a lot of work in this field and published in medical literature. It was very easy because doctors, they didn't, have, didn't, have, didn't think about money. Yeah. It was socialism. Mm -hmm. They got their salary and everybody was happy in this. Not very happy maybe, but uh, they are satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, People now, nowadays, young people don't be believe that, but uh, it was uh, it was so. You uh, could go to clinic, you so oh let's try this and what uh, oh yeah we have such a patient and uh, patients and we, yeah let's try yeah and uh, in this sense uh, socialism was a very good thing in this sense I think. But um, try now to go to a private clinic especially, it is impossible. And in other places also, oh, okay, money, we, we don't have money for this and that and so on. Yeah. 
sorry for this, but I am no, too no. old, uh, living in, in socialism and in, in capitalism now, and uh, I can compare. And there was bad things in socialism as well, but in, in this sense, when you wanted to do something in clinics, try new methods or something, no problem. Yeah. I didn't How is it done practically for laser? How is it arranged? Oh, uh, say, say, uh, there are many types of lasers right now. And uh, many companies who produce, and every company tells you that, oh, my production is the best, of course, you can take this. Uh, but, uh, yeah, in, uh, for every kind of uh, treatment, you, of course, uh, Important is wavelengths, important is dose and intensity of light. Uh, and uh, again, for example, we have seen such a thing, uh, I remember now, uh, the result w results were much better when we radiated in dark rooms, even with the shows. Um, uh, I started with, with shows which are, those cells are in uh, dark anyway. But in laboratory we work in, in dark rooms and uh, in clinics I told you, uh, them that you, you, you irradiate your patient in dark. Otherwise the sun coming, so like here, it is so bright. You, uh, your effect is disappearing. You can, you have the work in, 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 in dark. And it was just a happy case that we started with those um, ulcers which are living in, 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 <laughs> in dark anyway. <laughs> but yeah, we never work in laboratory with such a windows. All windows are uh, covered. You cannot do light experiments in, uh, in uh, sunshine. Do you have a question? Mm -hmm. Um, it is a, a very good thing that um, say very few really, uh, and uh, this w is one of the uh, reasons, and it is was historically one of the reasons. Um, the situation is, this red light, uh, you, even with higher doses, you will not get damage. Uh, but uh, if you, if your doses and intensities are high, you, you just see, don't see any effects. Uh, and uh, yeah, in this sense, uh, this is a very positive thing. You cannot really overdose, like in, in, in chemicals, like in drugs, you can do very, ultraviolet is bad, it, it, you can over, overdose it, and ultraviolet is acting on uh, lipids or other components of cells. Uh, you can destruct, uh, have destructions and so on. Ultraviolet is, you have to start somewhere 400 or something, 450, till cell say 900, this visible part and near infrared part. But the heat will not affect proteins. Uh, why, why to have the proteins? When you irradiate, cytochrome C oxidase is absorbing and it takes care that the proteins start to work better. You don't uh, need uh, to irradiate proteins directly. Everything is, uh, the point is that in by this red light irradiation you change cellular metabolism uh, in very soft way. Not damaging, really. Even very high doses, you don't can't uh, damage. It just there is no effect or very little effect. So you, you remember all those, uh, those dependencies. And when your dose is somewhere there, of course, the effect is slow, if any. But uh, there is really uh, no possibility. To, uh, sometimes maybe by pulsed light, if you uh, uh, 
get um, picosecond pulses, for example, very powerful, and then you get um, damage. But um, yeah, by real chemicals, you get it much easier than by light. About pulsed light, um, you just mentioned very short pulses, microseconds. Uh, Picosecond, nanosecond, not right. only microseconds. Okay. But in high frequencies? Then? Ah, there are frequency dependencies. So you, when you look my uh, first papers, on the first book or so, you see those things. But continuous wave is good as well. <laughs> and no damages. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, of course, you can use uh, pulsed light. And, and much lower frequencies. study literature, I don't remember, but uh, those uh, 100, we did a lot of work. It might be in some, some cases, it is dangerous. Better have those, not, not those pulses. <laughs> when your pulses are um, not very high frequency pulses, like yeah. this. Uh, but uh, it, yeah, because his pulse intensities are higher in this case, and it is, might be dangerous. But when you have this one, it's much better. You, you, you look my papers. We have done in, in, in those things. I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, for sure, because sometimes, sorry for speaking in this way, I feel myself that I am getting too old. I, there is no interest anymore. In science, you, you have the fire. You have to be uh, enthusiastic. But sometimes I feel myself like and very old animals. Uh, <laughs> and oh, I know everything. Oh, it's not interesting. This is not interesting. Oh, this is doing this. This will be bad, not interesting. Ah, this guy is doing. Aha, this might be interesting. Uh, this is very personal feeling. <laughs> and, so. and yeah, indeed, when you're getting older, then you think uh, there are some other interesting things in life to do. Uh, yeah, for this, I know. This is very, very, very human. <laughs> Sorry. Grandchildren and your grandchildren are your. Oh yeah, I have one daughter. She is an Italian medical doctor, anesthesiologist, and she has uh, three boys. And uh, yeah, also here in Tallinn, in, in VMC. And uh, yeah, uh, they are very clever, and I teach them also what light is, not only this light, light can be different, and red light or blue light or so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my family lives in Wiemse, near Tallinn here. 